Hello everyone, after a very long break I am back and for this video I want to talk about the grade node. This might be the node I use the most when comping and there's a lot of grading tools in Nuke but in my opinion that's the best one. Uh, looking at the grade node there's a lot of different sliders, they all seem to be doing the same thing but actually each of them has a very specific use and we'll get to each of them. But as a general rule you have two parts of your grade node. The first four sliders are used for match grading, an element to a plate, and the last three are more of an overall adjustment. Whenever you're using CG matte painting and a footage element something from a green screen, the first thing you want to do to match that element to your plate is get the black point and the white point of this element to match the black point and the white point of the plate. And that's where the great node is so useful. So let's get to it and you'll see. So let's look at my airplane here. And the first thing you want to do is look for what is the darkest value in your element. So you can bring up the exposure slider here and kind of look around and you can see it's probably something around here. You can also get the gamma up a bit to help you out. It's probably something here. So I'm going to sample these few pixels. So you can select the sampler and go here. And right away you can see as I'm doing that, the values start to change and it won't make sense if you do that. So you need to disable the grade node when you're sampling or not look through it, but I just find it easier to disable it so you're sure you're not doing anything to it. So let's do it again. So I'm just like, and now I'm sampling these values. Here they are. And that's the darkest part of my element. Let's go and do that on the plate. Now, as you can see here, when you hover, it says this color is turning to black. So it's going to take whatever is the 0, 0, 0 0.4 and turn it into black at 0, 0. It's going to do the same thing for the white point. And then this black value, that's 0, is getting turned into lift. So what happens is that black point becomes lift and that white point becomes gain. Internally, it sets them to 0 and 1 first before it does that. That's all you need to worry about. Black point becomes lift, white point becomes gain. So that said, let's go into our lift and pick the darkest part of the plate. So once again, just bring your exposure up. There's a lot of dark values here, but since my plane sits on the left, I want to try to sample something in that area of the plate. This is probably good. Uh, let's go bring this up, sample that. Cool. Now let's look at the comp reset. And it doesn't make a big difference. It's lifting everything a little bit. But when you look at the black values, if you bring the exposure up, you can see the plane now fits a lot better in the plate when the grid is on because the black levels are closer. So let's do the same thing with the white point now. So back to my plane, I'm going to disable the grid again. And to look for the white point, you can bring your gamma up and do exposure down. And you can see as you do that, you only have the brighter spot of the plate. When you pick up, especially for the white point, you want to get something very neutral, more toward the white. You don't want something that's very red or very blue because it's going to tint the whole element. So unless your plate is that color, you don't want to go too crazy. So let's pick up something here because I know that's fairly neutral. All right, that's probably pretty good. And do the same for the plate. Again, you probably want to look for elements that would make sense as you go down. Here I have some elements here that are pretty bright and Let's get the exposure up again. But my best candidate is probably this. Bunch of white bricks here. Those will be very good for this. All right. So let's reset exposure and gamma. And look at the final comp. And right away with the grade node on, you can see it looks a lot better. Everything starts to fit as you bring up the exposure. The black levels are together. You go down. Everything seems to kind of come down together. And that's why it's such an important step to match your black and white point first thing when you bring an element in because that's going to be most of the work done right away. All right, so we've done the first four sliders. So just once again, black point becomes the left, white point becomes the gain. So you just have to work it that way. Black point, white point is your element, left gain is your plate. Now for the last three sliders, which are more an overall adjustment, you can see multiply makes things brighter. It's like bringing up the exposure on the camera. So that's what you would do if you need something to be brighter. Offset, it adds values to everything equally so the blacks become lifted and becomes washed out. So something to use usually in very low numbers. And gamma is a sort of contrast adjustment if you want. So as you bring down, it takes all your mid values and makes them darker or brighter. And I just want to show you those to a curve. Hopefully that helps understanding what they do. 
So just let's bring a color look up for example here. I'm just gonna make this a little bigger. And this is your values. This is one, this is zero. And as I bring this up, you can see everything becomes brighter. So I'm multiplying the values here. So one becomes, let's say 1.5. Zero says that zero because it's a multiplication. So zero never changes. And everything under zero, if you had negative values, they also get multiplied down, so they become darker as well. So that's something to be mindful of when doing multiplications. Now that's the multiply. Offset is adding values to everything, so it's like lifting this. That's why everything becomes so washed out, because zero becomes zero too, and nothing is actually dark anymore. And gamma is a curve adjustment, so as you bring the gamma down, as you win one, don't get affected, but everything above one and under zero do, and everything in between does, right? So just be careful of how crazy your adjustment in a gamma could be, because if you bring a gamma curve to something crazy like that, you obviously get a terrible result. That won't happen with the gamma slider here. But in general, just be careful how you start bringing your gamma down. I'll just give you terrible results like this. Things get very crunchy. It's not very pretty, so you never want to go too crazy with gamma either. All right, so just to round this up, you have four checkbox here. Reverse reverses the grade node, so if you want to do it one grade to adjust something and then reverse it, you can always take your grade node, take the second one, reverse it, and now you can see it's like I'm not doing anything. We're grading and then we grade it back. can be useful once in a while. The last two is black clamp and white clamp. By default, the black clamp is on. Usually you want to keep it that way. You don't want to go into negative values if you gamma down or if you multiply. You don't want anything under zero to get multiplied down as I was showing with the curve before. And white clamp is something you only want to have on if you work on the alpha because the alpha of your element always stays between zero and one. But when working on your RGB, you don't want to clamp the whites. And unless you're working in video where you don't have any values over one, you don't want to clamp your whites. You want to keep all the dynamic range you have. And even with video become HDR and everything, it's probably something you'll see less and less. All right, uh, masking is to do a local adjustment. You can plug a mask into it. Unpremote, I don't use that. I always use my Unpremote and Premote node. I would say you should do the same. It's easier. You know what's going on if you do it that way. Unpremote is something I want to cover in a future video. Mix luminance, I never use it. And the mix is the percentage of how much this affects the image. So if you have your mix at 0.5, you only get half of the grading. I don't recommend using mix too much. You should get your grades right instead of having to reduce them here and do an overall thing, because then if you change, you might do overcompensation on the gain because your mix is down, so you have to grade crazy values and it doesn't quite make sense anymore. It's cleaner to keep it at one. And if you need something to be less graded, change your adjustments in the grade node itself. So as a rule, try to stay away from the mix. All right, I think that's it for the grade node. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of how it works, how to use the match grade feature of it, which is a great feature, how to use all of the adjustments and know what each slider does. If you have any question about the grade node, please let me know in the comment section below. If there's any node you want me to cover in a future video, any question you have about anything else in Nuke, just let me know. I'll be happy to make a video about it. And now that I'm back making these videos, you can subscribe, you can get a notification. So next time there's a video for me, you can see it right away. And just let me know if you like it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.